Calder. Good evening, I'm Neil Wacker. Welcome to Inside New Zealand. In January last year, warbird collector Sir Tim Wallace crashed his beloved Spitfire at the Wanaka airstrip, suffering severe head injuries and spending months recovering in hospital. He was lucky to escape with his life. Sir Tim's wife, Lady Prue, was swamped with inquiries from New Zealand and around the world on Sir Tim's condition. The media carrying daily reports for the weeks he remained in critical care. Before his accident, Sir Tim was in Russia, overseeing one of his most ambitious projects to date. Okay, we're all right. As the sun sets on a remote Siberian airfield, a World War II Russian fighter starts up. It's a moment Sir Tim Wallace has waited a long time for. His dream of rebuilding a Polycarpov I-16, a plane that hasn't flown for 50 years, has been realised. Now, only the ultimate test remains. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a little beast, really, isn't it? <laughs> I said it looked like a bumblebee, but it's uh, a bit bigger than a bumblebee. <laughs> you got a big smile on your face, Tim. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, three years. Three years when we first, Ray and I first signed the contract. And uh, so about a year behind. But then again, there's, you know, something as difficult as this. Uh, you can't expect it to go exactly right. Uh, if he's happy with the taxing, if he's happy with the uh, way it's handling, he'll take it all. The I-16 was Russia's frontline fighter when Hitler attacked. Tim Wallace will be the only person in the world to have one that flies. I'm not sort of, you know, I want to jump up and down. I'm not that sort of excited, but I think, I think you know, in other words, you're saying that it's been a challenge, and I think when you see a challenge coming to fruition, then there's a, a real good feeling that you get about it. In Russia, things never go quite as planned. At the last minute, the Russian test pilot decides today is not the day. Fading light and a concern about the engine's oil pressure will keep the I-16 on the ground for now. But one day, this little plane will thrill the crowds in New Zealand at the Wanaka Air Show. Tim Wallace has blazed many a frontier, but he's perhaps best known as the man behind New Zealand's biggest air show. It's a very evil-looking aircraft. That's the Gilly 109. But what a beautiful sight to see. He's taken the Wanaka air show from small beginnings to the biggest in the southern hemisphere, based around his own collection. What the Japanese call it, the Whispering Death. One one nine one, we're talking on. Of all the aircraft in Tim Wallace's collection, and there's now fourteen, one will always be special. A plane which long ago captured the public imagination and Tim's own heart, the Spitfire. For me, it's a great feeling and a great privilege. I believe that I've got a, you know, a rare privilege. A rare privilege to own one 
and an even rarer privilege to fly one. Now, I remind myself of that every time I fly it. You can cruise along at 150 miles an hour quite gracefully, and then you can zip it up to 400 miles an hour. You really uh, can use a lot of stride. It's long been a dream of Tim's to have a collection which includes the main fighter aircraft of all the major powers that did battle in World War II. It's a mission that's taken him to all corners of the world, but more often than not, to the UK. The quiet country villages of East Anglia and Cambridgeshire are the home of the best aircraft restorers and the biggest warbird collectors. And yeah. about uh, 60,000 man hours of work. Men like Stephen Gray, the there. world's number one collector, right, so who houses his through. collection in a huge hangar at the Duxford airfield. The Englishman has one of the three hurricanes left in the world that still fly. Well, there she is. You know, Stephen times. Gray sold Tim his first yeah. Spitfire, and like him, Tail. flies his collection. Yeah. If you want a kind like that, it's called the so-called Lockheed Strut. Yeah, we've got that. Oh, good. There's the Mark I, I think, for the Mark II. We've yeah. got the Mark II. Although neither would admit it, there is you know, undoubtedly a rivalry between the two men. Uh, the aristocratic Stephen Gray has been number one in the warbird business for years. Yeah. Tim Wallace, the Kiwi bush aviator, is catching up fast. Well, I mean, my Mark V and my Hurricane are going to have all the gun yeah. and other than the ammo, the ammo, you know, other than the ammo, it's going to be stock. Tim Wallace, too, will have a hurricane once this pile of twisted metal is turned into a flying machine. Standing up would make me sick. How do you figure it, George? Eh? You just keep mopping off a slime ball who deserves nothing. I borrowed some money from some guys. Give me who we gotta talk to. I'm ashamed. You should be. She was a nice girl. Television drama. I'm ashamed. That simply doesn't get any better. Shut up. NYPD Blue. Tonight, 9.30 on 3. Hi, welcome to my TV. Oh, that's it. Excuse me. Bash. I'm called Bully. Bully! Oh, good evening. I'm Neil Walker. Welcome to Inside TV. You boys are serious, are you? Oh, isn't it lovely to see so much of New Zealand on the air, Tim Yeah, it's great, Tim, Mama. If you want to relicense your car or change ownership details, pop into your post shop. It's easy and convenient. Post shops, where you'll find people like me, helping people like you. Wants you to It's Disney's new video, Aladdin and the King of Thieves, starring Robin Williams as Genie. Don't miss the chance to own Disney's new video. Enter a plea of insanity. Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Get yours now. No more copies made after Anzac Day. I'm gonna go to school next year. I'm going to intermediate next year. Cool it. I'm sick of schooling. It would be better off just getting a job. If you need a job, I can be fired again. Get a job? Oh, you? What job would that be? You believed in yourself once. You can believe in yourself again. The New Zealand Employment Service is here to help.
Wellington Park Royal, a night of luxury for only $169 per couple. We call it the Park Royal Weekend, and you can reserve your night by phoning 0800 85 75 85. A beautiful room, breakfast, and a civilized 1pm checkout, only $169. The Park Royal Weekend, a limited offer from the Wellington Park Royal. 0800 85 75 85. The picturesque countryside of East Anglia is home of Hawker Restoration, a small company specialising in restoring old warbirds. Today, collectors fly in from around England to have a look at how Sir Tim's hurricane is progressing. There's the wing. Yeah. It's all metal wing and centre section. Yeah. It's an all metal tail. Yeah. Like most collectors, they want to know who's doing what, where and how. After months of work, the hurricane's tail is ready. The local media grab a few shots of the Kiwi who's pumping hundreds of thousands of pounds into their community. Tim's Russian partner Boris Nikiforov is here to see how the English do it. Here too are some of the younger up-and-coming collectors keen to hear Tim's story. How I got involved with Warbirds really was that uh, as a schoolboy we had uh, Mustangs that were left over from uh, the Pacific uh, War. They actually arrived in New Zealand after, in, on the ship after the uh, conflict was over. And as a schoolboy, uh, these used to fly over Christchurch at a thousand feet uh, full throttle. And, you know, the, 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 how your back reacts to it. Uh, and we used to bicycle down to that base. I mean, that's how I became involved with Warbirds, never ever thinking that I'd be ever able to own one. No, well, actually, I'm, I'm, I mean, quite honestly, I mean, this gives me a greater pleasure than many years. I mean, I've been involved in very exciting businesses, but, I mean, this here is... is uh, it's been a challenge in, in your youth, isn't it? Well, it is. It actually, it actually, I'll tell you what, it keeps you younger. Well done. Well done. <laughs> At last count, Tim had five major restoration yeah. programs on the go. This rapid expansion of his collection is driven in part by his age. Uh, you know, just like Stephen Gray, because... You know, Stephen is in his 50s, I think he's a little older than me, and he wants to fly a number of warbirds before he loses his license. Mm. And I'm a bit the same, actually. Mm. You, know, uh, you know, you don't hold your medical forever. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's an ambition to fly a Hurricane, it's an ambition to fly a Mark V. Yeah. I'll be flying my Yak-3 within a month. I've just got that rebuilt in Russia. I'm not going to fly the I-16, it's a too much of a twitchy little aircraft because right, yeah, yeah. I, I busted my back in a helicopter accident. And, um, you know, I've only got one leg that works properly. Well, actually, that one doesn't work at all, but, but as I Tim say... Tim was left partially paralysed after a helicopter crash in the winter of 1968. He was helping a friend by flying in feed to snowbound sheep when he had power lines. He spent six months in the Burwood Spinal Unit. Were you told that you'd never be able to fly again? <coughs> if I was told that, I certainly didn't listen. Were people dubious about letting you back into a helicopter to fly? Well, if they did, they didn't tell me. I mean... Do you think they would have? I think my mother was dubious because uh, um, I think that she um, thought that I'd had enough and uh, I should, you know, change what I was doing. But uh, she realised that I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a born aviator and uh, that's what I want to stay doing. Tim, you have had a few accidents, haven't you? How, how many have you had? <coughs> yes, I mean, you know, say if, if, if I've had a few accidents, I've had a... I've had a few accidents uh, in uh, in the nature of you know with the nature of my work, um, uh, and I make no excuses for them. I mean, very seldom the, the aircraft uh, lets you down. You usually uh, let the aircraft down. In many ways, though, it has been the crashes involving others that have hurt Tim Wallace the most. At Warbirds over Wanaka three years ago, chipmunk pilot Ian Reynolds died instantly. Tim made the decision that the air show would continue, and at a media conference later in the day, he was forced to defend his decision under some tough questioning from reporters. When you have a car accident, do all the cars on the road stop? 
and go and put them in the garages? I mean, that's the answer. I mean, was there a reason to stop the U-shape? We weren't being callous and carrying it on. I think <coughs> it shows as a result of this accident or the, one of those things. If you saw how we handled it at the end there or, 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 or during it, we tried to be respectful yet continue the show and really, I mean, when I get to bed tonight and it's all over, I'll be bloody happy because This one's still on target, though. Pardon? Look, I don't have even thought about 96. Yeah, I mean, what I might have said up there was to keep the crowd from getting too excited. Yeah. Because I think that's what they were doing. Yeah. 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 In the dear days and everything, I had to go and see husbands and wives, I mean wives, mothers. It's not easy. But it happens. Get all the best jobs, don't I? Suzanne Paul has a natural glow, so she's the perfect person to play Fairy Godmother. I've travelled the country, giving real people the makeover of their lives. Hello! Bit of a style challenge here. Woman's Day Style Challenge takes four lucky people each week and transforms them with lots of fun along the way. No, don't you need out, my fiancé won't watch you. You feel like a nice young thing? <laughs> well, I do. Suzanne Paul hosts Woman's Day Style Challenge. Starts Wednesday, 7.30 on 3. Ooh, Thank goodness for new Carex. While its antibacterial formula combats germs and odours, Carex gently moisturises. Hmm, very nice. So after every little job, make sure your hands are Carex clean. Unconventional wisdom. VTEC. The unique Honda engine that delivers economy and performance on demand. Which is why Honda Civic and Honda Accord drive in a class of their own. VTEC. Only by Honda. So make it a real meal deal. Yeah, that's a taste for me. A Zinger Burger combo served with chips and a Pepsi for just five seventy-five. So finger licking good. film developed in Vico's expert hands and you could win. First prize, five days in Queensland. Second prize, seven days. And third prize, 11 days in Queensland. So develop your film at your Vico pharmacy or photo store and then... new Meiji pasta snacks. Mix the can. Tomato and who? That's the idea. Only five minutes. A pasta snack in no time flat. Meiji, that's the idea. This is so yum. Good you'd enjoy them. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways to revitalize yourself is to get close to nature. 
So Palmolive now has a new and better way to clean and replenish your skin. New Palmolive Naturals Shower and Cream with natural plant extract. Leaves your skin feeling softer and more moisturized than any soap can. Palmolive Naturals Shower and Cream. You can't always be your first to nature, but your skin can. The financial muscle that allows Sir Tim Wallace to search the world for warbirds has come from two things, helicopters and deer. Right, this is a crippled, crippled deer farm now. We've got that mountain and we've got the, you know, the, all those deer down to the valley down there. Two big deer farms, one at each end of Lake Wanaka in central Otago. But before he moved into farming, Tim ran the biggest deer recovery operation in the country. A fleet of helicopters combed the hills, turning the meat and velvet of a pest into big dollars. Well, we had the biggest operation, um, and when we were shooting, I think if you're talking about numbers of deer recovered back to the factory, in our height, we shot 35,000 in one year. The big money soon drew others into the game. To stay in front, the shooters and pilots had to push themselves and their machines to the limit. What sort of risks did you take? Uh, we had margins that we worked to, and uh, an unproductive pilot would have a very wide margin and a very productive pilot could possibly go over what would you can say is sensible. Uh, but then again, you have to find these margins yourself. Really, you've got not a lot of people to teach you. Once you're out there in the hills, uh, you've got no one watching you, and you're, you're your own uh, judge of what you do. What sort of hours were you working? Well, I can remember logging 50 hours in under five days. Now that's pretty pressurised flying. But you've got to realise that, you know, the mountains were yours, the deer were over the mountains, and there wasn't any limitation other than weather limitations and daylight. And you'd basically start at daylight and end at dusk, and whatever you had, you had to bring out, and sometimes you had to stretch daylight a little. When the number of deer started to fall, Tim switched tack and pioneered live deer recovery, an even riskier job. Again, Profits depended on numbers. I don't think we broke the 10,000 mark, but we were somewhere between nine and 10,000 live deer captured back to farms. Each one of those had to be captured individually, all offering difficult or, you know, challenging situations. But uh, again, it... Uh, you know, that was, I, I believe when you look back on it, uh, that was really quite a feat. Opening the big gates. Tim has continued to look for an edge in the deer business. Meeting the officials. The quest has taken him to deepest Siberia, a region called the Gorni Altai. We are deer farming ourselves here, uh, mainly really to gain experience in what we should be doing in New Zealand. I mean, our company or there'll be a few others that'll uh, follow their ways. Um, my case, uh, we bought a large property. We're going to extensively farm and run deer like they do in Russia. Is it hard operating those in Russia and the Russian system, the Russian one? <laughs> Unbelievably hard. Deer farming in Siberia is a primitive operation. In the Gorni Altai, there's no electricity, no running water, but velvet that's produced is the best in the world. Wallace's farm managers have found life almost unbearably tough here, and ideas Tim had of making money out of the venture were quickly forgotten. Well, how tough it is. I mean, to make a profit out of it, I think you'd be dreaming uh, because uh, you're a Westerner and trying to uh, break the system is very, very difficult. But uh, we're actually learning an awful lot without having to try and say we want a profit in our pocket at the end of the day. What we've learned has been immense. Yep. 
Yeah, it's all happening, chopping up meat here. Tim Wallace has been doing business in Russia during a time of immense upheaval and change. When he first came here, there were endless queues for basic foodstuffs. These days, markets are full of local and imported products. Tim owns 50% of a company called New Trade, which sells millions of dollars of dairy products and other goods to the Russians. And like most people doing business in Russia nowadays, Tim has felt the hand of the mafia. Tim and his business partner recently pulled out of a supermarket project with losses of over a million dollars. The mafia was simply making life too difficult. Our manager's son was murdered by the mafia. Um, I learned on this trip that another person we'd been involved with uh, was shot. His driver and his driver's wife were shot in the car. Um, but that, uh, but look at the bank managers. I understand the mafia are moving into the banks in Moscow. Nine bank managers have either been poisoned, shot, or car bombed. Now that's a move. So their reach is extensive. It's very programmed and extensive, and I feel that the, that the government uh, are not taking hold of it quick enough because the mafia becomes stronger the longer you leave it. Does this frighten you in a business sense, in a personal sense? When I'm in dangerous situation, I make sure I'm well looked after. Um, and I won't explain that much further, but uh, I'm careful. I know where, um, where not to tread, and I've been there long enough now to know how to be careful. Tim's biggest investment in Russia now is restoring aircraft. Old aircraft, that is, made the way they were in the 1930s and 40s. But while the techniques look simple, like everything in Russia, it requires deep pockets and unbelievable patience. One last round of poker. Or just cashed in his chip. The lines on your hand are perfect for bacteria to live and breed in. Dettol antibacterial soap kills the bacteria, leaving your hands fresh and clean. If you're a residential customer who dials straight through with Clear, you're about to get something very special. A series of new offers that guarantee to surprise. Offers that are better, cheaper and lower than you've ever seen before. But these offers are not for everyone. Only for those people who've decided to make their toll calls automatically with Clear. Clear Direct Dial Deals. They're a gift. If the words export pine make you think of planks and wood chips, think again. Our modest pinus radiata is among the world's finest. In fact, there's really only one thing modest about it. Early settler. When you care for wood, it shows. You've been seeing a city girl. Yep. She wants me to go up to walk on with her. Oh, yeah. What's the attraction up there? Place in the harbour. 500 SL Mercedes. 80-foot yacht. Her old man's got a box at Eden Park. Oh, yeah. She doesn't drink spokes, but... She's a hard row finding the perfect woman, boy. Reckon. Still. No hurry, eh? Good on you, mate. Spades. Pride of the South for over a hundred years. In recent years, Sir Tim Wallace has been a frequent visitor to the city of Novosibirsk, the grey, drab capital of Siberia. Unemployment here has soared since the Cold War ended. The city's aircraft factories are no longer part of the arms race. For many, a job in the future depends on Western entrepreneurs like Tim Wallace. And Novosibirsk. And Novosibirsk, yeah. But the unsteady change from communism to capitalism means frightening financial risks for people like Tim. But we 
when you're actually manufacturing something in Russia that's rather unique and difficult, and it's in, a, in military plants, um, you know, you just have to go by feel and, and use your own judgment. I mean, what I'm doing is pretty unique, really. You know, it, it, it is. It's pretty unique. But, uh, and I do believe that, you know, we'll be there'll be a business in it. So can I, categori can I categorically say it will be? I can't. You know, I only have to believe in it. Because really, at the end of the day, I mean, they must understand that if they want work, then there has to be a profit in it for me. And if there's not a profit in it for me, then I just go away. Mm. The Russians were supposed to have the I-16 flying while Tim and his chief engineer, Raymond Queen, were in Russia. As usual, things haven't gone to plan. Oh, it's down. It's very rough. It's much rougher than it was before. Part of the problem is that under communism, decisions were made by committee, and old habits die hard. But as Tim says, that's Russia. Early on, he learned to grin and bear it. In the end, his patience will mean he's the first collector in the world to own a fighter of this type. And, you know, the type of material they use here. Yeah. You know, you look here at the welding, the welding and everything. It's very strong. Uh, you know, it, it's a very strong aeroplane, but it's, you know, it's, it's a Russian aeroplane. It's Russian built. It's a Russian aeroplane. You know, it's, it's, it's totally basic. I mean, this here is the local wood, that's birch wood. Their resins there, they're very strong resins. Uh, you know, the way that that is. <laughs> this design here is designed so you don't have to be a specialist to, to, to do it. I mean, uh, there are some, you know, some parts there that are that are very specialised, but basically, it's made so the average worker can go to a factory, get a job, and be part of building this aeroplane. This is the fourth day in a row that Tim and his engineer Ray have made the four-hour return trip to the deserted airfield. Each time, expecting to see their million-dollar project get off the ground, but things have gone from bad to worse. The heat of the Siberian summer gives way to late afternoon rainstorms on most days. Today is no exception. It's yet another frustrating delay, but of course, there's always tomorrow. The Sydney aircraft factory in Novosibirsk. Once it armed that evil empire. Chikalo. Uh, plant. Now it's building I-16 for the multi-millionaire New Zealander. But Tim Wallace now worries that they are taking his money for granted. And he's about to give the Russians an ultimatum. Any more price hikes and he'll walk away. Tim's project restoring I-16 supports 200 people. Without it, they'd have nothing to do. Some of the original workers are still here. The same people who turned out thousands of little fighter planes for Stalin's Air Force. Before the 90s, no Western businessman had ever set foot inside this factory. Now Tim is invited to look at Russia's supersonic fighters. Sukhoi. 27, the uh, flanker. Less thrilling for Tim is the massive cost overruns he's experiencing building planes here. Not only do the Russians have little to no understanding of modern business practice, but Soviet military culture often meant that planes or parts were thrown on the scrap heap. Rather than fix a problem, it was easier to build a new one. Time and money didn't enter the equation. So how much did the cost escalate? Well, I mean, uh, the, the cost has escalated, I would say, two to three hundred percent. So do you get the feeling that 
you know, you might be pouring money down a... Down the drain. I certainly felt that a year ago. Like, I certainly felt that, uh, 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 what am I doing? But you have to have faith in the people. Um, like, I've got faith in the professor. I've got faith in Tamilov, faith in Baron. Uh, they want to succeed. And uh, so that's what you have to go along with. And you have to explain to them what it is to uh, budget and keep to a budget. But you desperately want this to work, but are you not just one man up against a huge system which may never let you win? I've got more faith in Russia than that. You know, uh, they're, 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 make, they're, they're terrific people. I mean, I can honestly say uh, they're becoming, um, some, of, some of my very good friends now are Russians. Uh, I like them. Uh, we're very similar. New Zealanders and Russians are very similar in their outlook. I mean, the only thing that I'm having a bit of trouble with is drinking the vodka. <laughs> Bottoms up. In Russia, business and vodka go hand in hand. No vodka, no deal. I do love the country. I do love the people. I mean, I find the vodka side a little tough, but they have their, their, their times that they celebrate. If they're depressed or they're unhappy about things, they also drink vodka. So they have highs and lows, and I think vodka is part of their life. And you have to fit into that part of their life. <laughs> celebrations in Christchurch 50 years on and Tim Wallace throws the VE Day party. An air show extravaganza Tim himself has underwritten. For Tim this is all about remembering those who fought, remembering why they fought and remembering what they fought for. Five decades on both the planes and the people who flew them are defying their age. I like to get how you. Lovely to see you. What do you think of that? Did you love the airplane? I've got to uh, get my son to take him to the plane. Yeah, follow me around. Yeah, okay. So you follow me. The organizer, a modern day hero, in 1993, the Queen rewarded with a knighthood. Tim, what was your reaction when you learned that you were going to be knighted? Um, well, I never, ever, ever, you know, had given up any thought at all because, you know, you don't think about those things. Um, but when it was explained to me that, you know, it's me on behalf of uh, everyone that's worked for me or with me or to develop the deer industry, help develop it, or the aviation side, and someone has to be the fall guy, um, I understood and graciously accepted it. Initially, though, you turned it down, did you not? Oh, I, I mean, you're telling me this. I'm not telling you. You sent me a fact. No, I didn't. <laughs> well, I've forgotten about that fact. No, 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 no. Look, uh, you know, um, I think that uh, there might have been a bit of misunderstanding at the start, but, you know, the fact that uh, the honour has been bestowed and, um, on, you know, on behalf of a lot of my friends right from the start, uh, business colleagues, we've done it together. You know, to me, it's a, it's an honour for the company and the group of people we've been associated with. Has it changed things for you? It did a bit in the start, but then again, you know, uh, you don't change the way you are. Um, I don't try and use it uh, to gain advantage. I certainly don't do that. 
Um, I know that it's made my public commitments greater. Um, but then again, I've, I guess I've got a lot to share. Um, I've got to be aware of that. Um, it hasn't affected the family at all. It hasn't affected Prue. It hasn't affected the boys. Um, we're still the same. I mean, I didn't go up a grade in cars or anything. I still kept my old Holden. <laughs> the old Holden and the even older Spitfire. Tim is often compared to Douglas Bader, a World War II English Spitfire ace who flew with wooden legs. Bader survived numerous crashes, never gave up, and defied incredible odds. Right over, right. Right on. Parachute on. Today, Tim will take to the skies for the South Pacific Fighter Pilots Reunion. How are you doing today? Um, well, I've got, uh, it's all on the uh, canopy, it's all here. I go into a, uh, I use about two and a half thousand feet, come into a vertical dive, a clover leaf, then I go into Cubans, then I go into machine gun attacks, then I do canopy to the crowd, belly to the crowd, 45 degrees. Healthcare should be full of specials to help you save heaps, like the exciting new Eaton range from only $19.95, and a great card holder special on Antal's body language toiletries, and this beautiful free gift when you buy Baroque 50 mil spray. So for Mother's Day savings for the whole family, look out for your healthcare magazine, only from Antal, where you know we put your well-being first. Condensation and dampness. But don't you wish you had a thirsty dehumidifier that didn't take muscle to move? You'll find the Mitsubishi Oasis thirstier, but lighter. The Mitsubishi Oasis. Bigger thirst, less weight. high-speed oscillating head is proven to remove more plaque than a manual toothbrush. So you can brush with a toothbrush or more thoroughly remove plaque with the new Braun Oral-B Ultra Plaque Remover. Ah, chicken! Introducing the Liquor King and Sex Special A-Line Brown Kiss of three dozen cans for $33. Only from Liquor King, this mix. Getting to the bottom. I'm ashamed. Of a difficult case. You should be. She was a nice girl. NYPD Blue is next. Uh, 
Now, this wreck was from New Manx, right up on the Arctic, uh, um, on the Arctic Circle, on the top of Russia. And where did you drag it out from? Uh, where it was shot down. It was uh, on the tundra, uh, tundra tiger. They call it the tiger. It, Sir uh, Tim's it's dream of owning a hurricane explosion. took its first step to reality when he used uh, Russian uh, helicopters to retrieve this wreckage from the frozen tundra, its resting place for 50 years. So uh, uh, that sort of environment actually is quite good for the uh, keeping of the aircraft. Look, oh, this here is the fabric of the aircraft up here. <coughs> Now, you see, it's still, that's fabric, that's linen, mm. and it still, you know, it still sounds like tearing, you know, tearing linen, doesn't it? Mm. While the Hurricane's frame is being restored in England, all the other restoration work is being done by Air New Zealand in Christchurch. <coughs> okay, that's very close to the uh, fuel tank. It's in the trailing edge of the centre section, and a bullet came through from this way, you know, uh, you can see the metal as it's folded out. Uh, that's a 20, that's very likely from an ME-109 uh, fighter. Britain's frontline fighter at the start of the war, the Hurricane was a basic aircraft, but getting a wreck like this back in the air will, in the end, take three years and a lot of money. The figure of a million pounds wouldn't be far away from its market value. And what about what it costs to put it together? Well, I mean, you're actually asking us what's our profit in it <laughs> when you're asking that. No, 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 I just want to have some. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Across the other side of the world, the who's who of the aviation industry gather. Yep. The RAF sends its hurricane, one of three left flying in the world. is close to having the pool. Don't that look nice? Makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, right. In the Thank same way the tail was handed over a year earlier, the structure of the historic fighter uh, is presented. Nice warm English better instead of that cold lager after this. So um, I'd like now to hand over to Ian Carmichael, the engineering this time, two of Tim's four sons and his wife, Lady Wallace, are here to share the moment of satisfaction. Well, I guess I've got um, a knack or a, an, an ability to see something and then go for it. And most things I'm in, if you look back, are things that are pioneering that nobody else has had a go at or prepared to have a go at. And once I actually prove it, and people follow you, then I'm actually then looking for the next opportunity. So I'm actually trying to keep ahead of the play. And in doing that, I have a rather uh, heavy set up cost sometimes, but I have a time lead of one or two or three years before I need to be into the next thing. And what drives you? Well, not money, uh, the success of a challenge. That drives me. You know, the hurricane, to see that, uh, 18 months from when we started it, we're 50% there. 1997, in the spring of 1997, it'll fly. Uh, the, the Ishak, the little donkey, that's the I-16 in Russia. To see that get to the tactical stage, and it nearly flew. But it will fly in the next week. <laughs> Russian project for three years and we've made immense progress in that time. A lot of people wouldn't have given you sixpence to get where we've got to. A lot of people just totally didn't believe it. But look, we've got something that's flowing.
mystery is made. An I-16 has been restored from scratch and flown for the first time in 50 years. Thanks to the vision and determination of one man, half a world away. <laughs> then, three months later, Tim Wallace crashed his Spitfire. He was to spend six weeks in Dunedin Hospital with a severe brain injury. He was given a 10 to 15% chance of ever regaining consciousness. But in his single-minded pursuit of her husband's recovery, Lady Wallace brought Tim home to Wanaka. He was unable to move, swallow, sit, speak, see or hear properly. But just days before Warbirds over Wanaka, the air show that means so much to him, Tim Wallace emerged from post-traumatic amnesia. his own collection take to the sky. Sir Tim Wallace is making a slow but steady recovery. He abandoned his wheelchair last September, and at his office in Wanaka, he now takes part in regular meetings with his business manager. And each day, he works with his own team of physio, occupational, and speech therapists. The crash may have robbed him of some of his physical and mental strength, but it hasn't taken away an ounce of his determination. In true Tim Wallace style, more than ever, he's fighting back. Yeah, so this, this, this is the, the first one that was... And out in his backyard, he's got something no one else in the world has got. This, and this, this is a replica gun here. That, yeah. That's not the real thing, but they've, they've replicated. So hopefully we'll, we'll get this painted in the next two or three weeks when the paint yeah. arrives and uh, re-establish... The I-16 has finally arrived in Wanaka. From Russia with love. Since this program was made, Sir Tim has continued to make steady progress in his recovery and has now taken delivery of three Russian I-16s. The planes will have their first public outing next Easter at the Warbirds over Wanaka Air Show.